So President Joe Biden has just mandated vaccinations for about 100 million Americans. Let's look at arguments for and against whether this action is constitutional. My name is Nate Delore. If you are new here, we talk about the law and the facts. If you are about that life, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel. On September 9th, 2021, President Joe Biden ordered a new federal vaccine mandate that affects over 100 million Americans. Well, today on this channel, we're going to look at the arguments for and against whether this action, mandating vaccines to 100 million people, is constitutional. And you're going to decide which side has the better argument. Now, first, we're going to look at the Biden administration's legal rationale for mandating vaccines. Then we're going to look at arguments against the constitutionality of the mandate. Are vaccine mandates constitutional? Well, in a word, yes. The case law to stand for mandatory vaccinations being legal is a case from Massachusetts named Jacobson v. Massachusetts. Now, this case was decided in 1905. A Massachusetts law allowed cities to require residents to be vaccinated against smallpox. Now, a city in Massachusetts, Cambridge, passed a law that required its citizens to be vaccinated. The law did have some exceptions. Now, this pastor, Henning Jacobson, refused to get the vaccinations. And for that refusal, he was criminally charged and fined $5, which today would amount to about a $150 fine. Now, the issue at the Supreme Court was, did this mandatory vaccination law violate Mr. Jacobson's constitutional rights to liberty? Now, Jacobson argued that subjecting him to this fine or imprisonment or even this criminal sanction for refusing vaccination was an invasion of his liberty. And this law was unreasonable, arbitrary, and oppressive. Remember, it was forcing him to be vaccinated. The Supreme Court in the 72 ruling ruled that the law was a legitimate exercise of the state's police power to protect public safety of its citizens. The court also reasoned that stopping the pandemic of smallpox was a compelling government interest, and this measure was acceptable under that premise. Now, the Supreme Court reaffirmed the decision in Jacobson in 1922 in a case named Zach v. King. Now, in that case, a local school district in San Antonio refused to admit students who had failed to receive mandatory vaccinations. Now, the Supreme Court said this was legal. And that's the reason why, if you look at this map, every state in America requires children to be vaccinated if they're going to go to public school. Obviously, there are some exceptions. Now, requiring vaccinations isn't new at the federal level either. For instance, all immigrants coming into the United States are required to receive these vaccinations upon entry. And even when we talk about the private sector, private employers, well, in 2018, the Eighth Circuit ruled that employers could terminate employees for refusing to take a vaccine. So with this case law firmly in place, the Biden administration set up a two-part scheme to vaccinate as many Americans as possible. First, as an employer, the government can mandate its own employees get vaccinated just like any other company. Now, the federal government is the largest employer in the United States with over 9 million employees. So the case law does allow the government to mandate its own workforce be vaccinated, obviously, as long as the vaccine is approved. So that isn't a hurdle for the government. But there are over 154 million people employed in the United States. So 9 million is just a little drop in a bucket. The issue is how do you get the other 143 million people vaccinated? Well, the Joe Biden administration is going to use its authority under OSHA to regulate private businesses. Now, what is OSHA? OSHA is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Now, the mission of OSHA is simple. It is to ensure safe and healthy working conditions for working men and women by setting up and enforcing standards that provide training, outreach, education, and assistance for that purpose. Now, understand the Department of Labor under OSHA can also enforce such regulations through fines, imprisonment, and so forth. Now, here's an academic article from Professor Baxter in 2017, where this professor lays out the legal justification of OSHA's ability to mandate vaccines. Utah Law Review, Volume 2017, Number 5, Employer-Mandated Vaccination Policies, Different Employers, New Vaccines, Hidden Risks. In this article, she explains that the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, known as OSHA, imposes an obligation on employers to ensure that the workplace is, quote, free from recognized hazards that are caused or likely to cause death or serious physical harm to their employees. This provision is known as the General Duty Clause. And in some situations, it may impose a duty on employers to take steps including encouraging 
or mandating vaccination to prevent employees from contracting or spreading serious disease in the workplace. And OSHA has done this before, once for H1N1, the seasonal flu, and for Zika. Now, also the Congressional Research Service back in 2019 did a review of mandatory vaccinations by the federal government. And they also concluded that the federal government under OSHA has the authority to mandate vaccines as a safety measure for particular companies. So the Biden administration's argument is that the law allows the government to force vaccinations with criminal sanctions, Jacobson, and that the federal government can mandate federal employees get vaccinated as a condition of their employment. And lastly, that the government can regulate private companies maintain a safe work environment from a deadly virus, and that authority comes through OSHA. Now, just to be clear, this is not controversial or even unprecedented. Most states force children to be vaccinated as a condition for going to school. And the case law is full of examples of government-allowed or government-mandated vaccines in certain professions, like healthcare, for instance. Now, the Biden administration's plan is to pass a regulation through OSHA that requires employers with 100 or more employees to mandate vaccinations. So now we know the Biden administration's legal rationale for mandating vaccinations in both the private sector, companies with over 100 employees, and in the public sector, federal employees. Now let's look at the arguments against mandatory vaccinations. The first argument is whether COVID is a high enough risk. Unlike smallpox, COVID has something like a 90 9% survival rate. And OSHA's authority to mandate vaccine requires a hazard that is, quote, causing or likely to cause death or serious physical injury. Now, COVID with a 99% survival rate, opponents do not think that this qualifies under the law as something that is likely to cause death or serious physical injury. 99% of the people survive. The second argument against the constitutionality of this action is that the White House chief of staff retweeted MSNBC's reporter's tweet that says OSHA is doing a vax mandate as an emergency workplace safety rule is the ultimate workaround for the federal government to require vaccinations. And it was retweeted by Ronald Klein, who is the chief of staff of President Biden. Now, the claim is that this is an admission that the regulation is both unconstitutional and is intended to be. Esteemed constitutional law professor Jonathan Turley says, In the law, it is called an admission against interest or an out-of-court statement by a party that, when uttered, is against the party's pecuniary, proprietary, or penal interest. In politics, it's just called dumb. White House Chief of Staff Ronald Klein offered a doozy this week when he admitted that the announced use of the authorization of the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, for vaccine mandate was a mere workaround of the thing being worked around is the Constitution. Courts will now have to be asked to ignore the admission and uphold the self-admitted evasion of constitutional protections. The third argument against the legality of mandating vaccinations is that the regulation is essentially overbroad. See, past regulations only apply to specific fields like healthcare. This one is overbroad because it applies to all workplaces and not specific workplaces like those who are at higher risk of infections. This distinguishes the mandatory vaccines for H1N1, where healthcare workers were mandated to get that vaccine, to now saying, well, we're going to mandate all companies to get the vaccine. Now, the last argument against the constitutionality of the regulation is the Roe v. Wade argument, essentially my body, my choice. The argument goes like this. Taking a vaccine is a privacy choice between you and your doctor like a woman's right to choose. And by eliminating the ability to choose whether or not to have this medical procedure, the government is violating the core principle of Roe v. Wade, my body, my choice. And in Roe v. Wade, the choice is to have that procedure. And with vaccinations, the choice is whether you don't want to have the procedure. All right, so at the end of the day, I've laid out both the arguments. Which side do you agree with? Do you think this is constitutional? Do you think it's not? Do you agree with the administration's rationale? Or do you agree with the counter arguments that have been laid out? See, here at this channel, your opinion is the only one that matters. Now, if you want to have a more in-depth conversation about this, click this link here and join me on Locals.com, where we go through and banter about the fine details of this. And if not, hey, just hit the like button and share this video if you find it to be informative. My name is Nate the Lawyer, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Peace.